We're back in Oklahoma. And would you look at the size of that soda. Look at this. It almost looks like you're out in the middle of the country and then bam, it hits you. A 66 foot tall soda bottle right on the side of Route 66. At nighttime, these rings are all lit up with different colors. It's a beautiful sight here at Pops. And the weirdness doesn't just end with the giant soda bottle. This place is a gas station, a convenience store, a restaurant, and most importantly, Importantly, features about a billion different kinds of soda. Rice soda, maple syrup, peanut butter. Wow. Where do you even start with something like that? Well, I guess you start with one of these. That is an overwhelming selection. Well, it took a little time. I had to stand in line for 20 minutes, but I finally bought the weirdest six pack of my life. Check out the selection. Chocolate covered bacon, beef jerky, peanut butter, regular butter, ugh, ranch dressing, and orange cream. Okay, I admit that this one's not that weird. I just wanted it. Pretty sure tonight we're gonna have ourselves a soda party. You seem so incredibly boring to me now. Now I wouldn't normally start the day with an attraction built in 2007. But come on, a 66 foot tall bottle of soda on Route 66, that's pretty great. Groovy. Don't worry though, fans of history, it's about to get old school real quick. Welcome to Arcadia, Oklahoma, home of the famous Round Barn. This barn was built in 1898, so it predates the famous highway running in front of it. And it's one of the most photographed things on the old road. And not only have they kept this place looking pretty fresh, look at that, but it's also open and free. Now that's a heck of a deal. I don't think I've ever been in a Round Barn before. It's my first time. Ooh la. La. How cool is that? Boy, they really love their round barn. So many old pictures and memories. Oh, and what's this? A monkey house. To see the monkey open the door. Oh, it's a mirror. I'm the monkey. Check out this old buggy here this rancher found on a local farm. Now she told me that they came to town, this little town here, three times a week. Saturday morning, get the groceries from the grocery store. Mm. That was Saturday morning. Saturday night, they come back to go to the dance upstairs. Sunday morning, they went, went, uh, came back to go to church on Sunday morning. Mm. So the old buggy's been to town many times. Imagine inheriting a ranch from your aunt and then finding an old buggy like that under a pile of hay. Okay, now it's time to see upstairs in the barn. Wow. Whoa, if you come to stand in the middle. Your voice gets all echoey. Some good acoustics in here. That must be why they held all the dances up here. Man, think of all those old timey dances. There's nothing I love better than a barn dance. Dong, dong, dong. Do you like I'll be honest with you. I do not know what the advantage of a round barn is over any other kind of barn, but I'll tell you this. This is the roundest barn I've ever been in. And you can take that to the bank. Ooh, it's really hot in there. Must be because they have so many weddings in the round barn. Check it out, here's an old original outhouse that was behind one of the lodges on the main street of town. This sign says that on Halloween night, these buildings were often relocated. Everybody had one. Hmm. It's not that uncomfortable. It's a little warm in here. But you know what would be uncomfortable? The fact that there's always two seats I don't want to sound weird, but I don't particularly want a pooping partner. Weird. Ooh, they even have a copy of the old Sears catalog in here because that's what the old timers used to use for toilet paper. Oh man, who used up page 48? There was a coupon in there. Check this out in the gift shop. This guy, Ernest Lee Breger, has been creating art. Check this sign out here and then look down. Yeah. These are so great. How about this one? You are so ugly. The paint on my house peel off when you came over. Yep, I'm buying these. What the heck? I'm an art collector now. Sweet. I just bought a whole sack full of signs for five bucks. Normally the artist who they call Butch is the man who runs the gift shop in the round barn, but today was his one day off. Oh well. Maybe I'll see him on my way back to California. The other guy in there, the one with the big cowboy hat, his name is Mr. Sam and he owns a hay ranch down the road with something very unusual on it. But before we get there, we're gonna have to pull off on a different kind of road. This is one of the original stretches of paved Route 66. Now check this out, the Dodge Journey is not a giant vehicle, it's not huge, and look how big it is compared to this narrow road. 
Now imagine two big rigs trying to pass each other on this bad boy. When they first started building Route 66, it was a miracle just to have a paved road at all. They had no idea the kind of mayhem they were going to release and the kind of traffic that was going to be going across country. So soon they had to expand the highway and sometimes they just built new sections so little parts like this remain scattered throughout the country. Just little abandoned forgotten sections of the old mother road. This part here has been resurfaced, but up here, oh yeah, look at that. This is some of that early original concrete Route 66. Oh, I love you, Route 66. Don't worry, not everyone's forgotten about you. You can see now this old stretch of country highway is now a residential street. There's little houses up and down this road. And whoever built this house on the old piece of highway really got into the spirit of things. Look at that. Their house is designed to look like an old Phillips 66 station. They even put an old gas pump out front. That rules. Mother Road housing goals. All right. Hey, farm time. Okay, just down the road, perched right on the edge of the Route 66 hay farm is something even more fantastic than the old buggy they found there. These are the ruins of an old Conoco filling station. Nobody knows exactly when this place was built, but they estimate somewhere in the 19 teens. Look at this. This is fantastic. When this place was built, there wasn't even electricity out here. All the lighting would have been from kerosene lamps. There were two old timey pumps here and this says that oil was dispensed from a 50 gallon drum. Just think about buying your gasoline or your motor oil or even your kerosene from a place burning kerosene lamps. The little sign says that cold soda or pop was only served on days when the ice man came by. There was no refrigeration, just a metal box with ice chips on top of the soda pop. And they could only sell chocolate in the winter time because in the summertime it would melt. Now the legend behind this old filling station is pretty cool because they say that during the depression, during the Al Capone years, two guys showed up as salesmen with a great way for this place to make money. Literally make money. The salesman brought them some counterfeiting equipment. A small shed was built on the back of this stone building and the only entrance was through a solid wooden door right here where this window is and right back here where now you just see dirt and a lot of mosquitoes. This is where they printed counterfeit ten dollar bills. Eventually, of course, the man here was caught and taken to prison and it's said by the locals that they overheard him saying it was worth it. Hey man, times were tough. People had to make a living. If most people found an old ruin like this on their ranch, they would knock it down in a lickety splickety heartbeat. But not our friend in the cowboy hat. They leave this open to visitors. This reminds me a lot of the Cool Springs station in Cool Springs, Arizona. There was nothing but stone columns and stone walls left from that station either, but it has been lovingly restored, so you never know. Someday, this place might get the same treatment. The crazy thing is, this isn't the only early gas station in the vicinity. There's another place down the road a little ways that's even more fascinating. This building on the edge of Luther, Oklahoma may not look like much today. In fact, there isn't even a sign out here. But in my opinion, this is one of, if not the most important structure on this stretch of Route 66. This was the threat filling station. It was hand built around 1915 by the Threat family using sandstone from their neighboring farm. 1915 means that this is not only one of the earliest gas stations that's still around on Route 66 in Oklahoma or anywhere else, but this building is particularly significant because Alan Threat and his family were African Americans and this was one of the first, if not the first, African American owned business along this stretch of highway in Oklahoma. On its face that doesn't seem like it's such a big deal, but we are talking about a time when segregation was not only in full force, but there were even things called sundown towns where if your skin was the wrong color, you were not allowed to be in town after dark, which is one of the most horrible, horrific, stupidest things I've ever heard in my life. Traveling Route 66 wasn't all fun and fancy free back then. If you were a person of color, it was very, very difficult. Many places wouldn't serve you. For many people, it was difficult to know where to go or where you would even be safe traveling any highway in this country at that time. So places like this were an oasis and a safe haven for many travelers who don't get a lot of mention in the history books. The Threat family had their local farm 
right back here and noticed that the highway was going right by the edge. It was pretty smart thinking for them to set up a filling station right here on the edge of what would become Route 66. Side note, Alan Threat is like maybe the coolest real name ever. Somebody needs to create a superhero based around that name. Anyway, once the famous Chicago to LA route was put in right on its doorstep, this became a very popular old timey mother road stop. And I feel like this is a place that stands out, that's really important and unique and tells a unique and not off heard story. It is on the National Register of Historic Places, but like I said, there's not even a sign here, no history, no nothing. I would really love to see this place get restored and get one of those historical markers out front, because I think this is an important story to be told. In many ways, we still have a lot more work to do, but we've come a long way, baby. Hopefully someday the threat filling station will get the restoration that it deserves. For now though, I just flicked a giant tick off my leg and a fly just flew in my eye, so I, I think I better start cruising on down the highway. And now we've come down the road a ways to see something completely different. This is the historic DX gas station built by Mr. and Mrs. Seba in 1921. The historic gas station is now a motorcycle museum and for years was an antique store. But before that, back in its heyday, it was not only a gas station, but a full service auto stop. You can see here this newer brick. These were all engine bays into this weird eight-sided building. You could get yourself some old-timey gas and then maybe have an engine repair, you know, just for fun. The old Diamond DX station used to sell the Never Knox gasoline. According to the sign in front of here, this place was used as a gas station until 1996 before it was restored, changed to the antique store, and then eventually, obviously, the motorcycle museum. The sign also says built in 1924, but the National Park Service says 1921, so I'm gonna go with 21. Whoa, look at all the motorcycles. I guess I should have been expecting this when the sign said motorcycle museum, but I didn't realize the extent Dent. Wow, holy cow, holy moly. Check out some of these early bikes. Some of them were literally just bikes with motors on them. Look at this, 1909 Triumph, a 1910 Indian, 1913 Pope. I didn't know the Pope rode motorcycles. Whoa, how awesome are these bikes? I'd love to give myself a vintage Harley or a vintage Indian Chief. But let's face it, this uh, vintage 1919 moped is Probably a little more my speed. Man, or maybe one of these old bone crushers or penny farthing bikes, huh? Or how about a John Deere bicycle? Look at this part of the building was an addition on the original station. You can still see the ghost lettering on the side. Seba's welding and repairing valved something something. Wow, look at that writing. Oh man, this blows my mind. Check out that old scooter right there. That's what I need. Ooh, I love seeing those old Harley Davidsons there. Check out this police bike here. Motorcycles are definitely a big part of American history. In fact, they're so much a part of American history that they even have Captain America's motorcycle in here. For real, the one from the movie. Well, I mean, it started out as Hydra's bike, but Captain America rode it. I salute you, Captain America. Hashtag freedom. That is one impressive collection of vintage machinery packed into an authentic vintage space. Seba Station rules. And I'm not even a motorcycle guy. The museum is free, so I wanted to help out and I bought a t-shirt and a little root beer from in there. And while I was doing that, the guy inside told me to check out the original old 19-teens rock-built outhouse. Wow, how about that? You can see the original old-timey porcelain, porcelain, no, they look metal. Oh yeah, cast iron toilets, whoa. Talk about vintage. I felt uncomfortable over there for a second because I realized that this one was the bigger size, so that was probably the women's restroom, and this is probably the men's room, so now I'm okay. I'm guessing and hoping that this brick wall here was once a little, a little taller to, to separate the sides. A little privacy here, please, jeez. Man, that is pretty awesome. I might have to go in there after I finish the root beer, huh? Ho <laughs> oh. Goodbye, Seba Station. Man, that was an awesome stop. I've never spent this much time in northeastern Oklahoma before. It certainly is beautiful out here. I am really enjoying the view. We've now made our way away down the highways and into Chandler, Oklahoma. And check this out, I thought this was pretty cool up here. Look at those old Coke ads up there. Delicious and refreshing. Relieves fatigue. Drink. 
Coca-Cola. It's another visit to Main Street USA. Check it out. That's the library right there. And look at that old service station. I'm guessing plenty of Model T's rolled through there back in the day. This is such a beautiful town. I can hear the Disneyland Main Street USA music in my head. Oh, I love this country. These buildings were all built in the early 1900s and I really wish this museum was open today. Wah, 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 wah. Ah, but just because the museum's closed doesn't mean there's nothing for us to see. Ho, ho, ho. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes! Look at this old Phillips 66 station. When I first saw this sign over there, I thought there was actually gonna be a modern gas station here, but no, it's one of those old original cottage style stations and check out this Cadillac here. Dang, I could picture myself in a Coupe de Ville. But look at the gas station building here. This is awesome. It's not the first or only restored Phillips 66 station that I've seen, but it is the only one with an open door. In fact, there's no door. Wow. Well, how do you like that? I don't know who paid to restore this place or keeps it up like this, but it is pretty amazing. I'm guessing this used to be the restroom. Look at that floor. Wow. We've been in a lot of restrooms together today, you and me. We're really bonding. It's so cool. It's almost like a little park out there. How weird. We are inside the old Phillips 66 filling station. My grandpa's name was Philip. He was driving an old car in the 30s. He just picked it up and came to show his sisters. And my aunt told me that when he pulled up, they're like, oh, hey there, Phil 66. I don't know why, but that story just suddenly popped into my head. Look at that T-bird right there. I don't know for sure what this building is here behind the station, but I'll tell you what it looks like. It looks like one of those old Valentine diners, a little. Don't you think? What do you think? Like I said, I haven't spent that much time in this part of Oklahoma before feels a lot like Missouri to me. I always think of the western part of Oklahoma, you know, the old west looking bits, but I never realized how green and luscious and beautiful the towns were out here. It's pretty cool. Dang, if this was still an operational gas station, this is where I would fill up. Get it? Fill up. <laughs> Ah. Fill up at 66. Never mind. Oh, someday I want to own a car with tail fins. Isn't that beautiful? That is awesome. Nobody wants to rear end you when you have those things watching your back. It's a very quiet day here and I'd love to explore more, but I think it's time to get going. Hey, how about this? Down the road a little ways in Davenport, Oklahoma, they have an old brick portion of Route 66. A lot of old highways and streets were paved with Portland cement and old red bricks. A lot of people think that the brick went out of style because, oh, asphalt's a little bit better. Yeah, sure, I guess that's one theory, but I like to think that the brick went out of style after the movie The Wizard of Oz, because after that, people only wanted to follow yellow brick roads. I love when old small towns have a bunch of historical murals with local characters on them. I love this one about Dr. Yui e. Nickel. There he is in 1912. You go, Yui. Oh, check it out. There's Dr. Nickel with his wife, Myrtle. Not a lot of little girls being named Myrtle these days, although it is still a popular name for turtles. All right. The shadows are getting long, gotta get back in the car again. There's still a few things I'd like to see today on old Route 66. And one of them is right up ahead here in Stroud, Oklahoma. Let me just find a place to pull over here. Wow, Stroud looks like a very nice town. And it's a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. You should have seen the little picture of it on the map. It looks so small, it looked like a dot. Well, not only is it bigger than a dot, it's also home to the Rock Cafe. This restaurant, built out of local sandstone, once again has been here since 1939. Back in the old times, this place was a Greyhound bus station, so it's always been busy, but these days it's even busier because it's the inspiration for Sally from Cars. Or more accurately, it's feisty female owner and proprietor Don Welch was the inspiration for Sally. Pixar came here in 2001 and liked Don Welch so much they gave Sally her eyes and her personality. She She's still running her place with her husband and two kids and apparently half the town. Even a gnarly, devastating fire that gutted this place in 2008 couldn't stop the Rock Cafe. They reopened only one year later and today they're still standing. From what I understand, the food here is very, very good. Unfortunately, it's also very, very gluteny, so there's really nothing for me inside, food-wise. But that doesn't mean I can't take a peek inside. Wow, how about that? This is awesome. You can see into the kitchen and wow. Look at this place. You would never know that this place had burned down. Oh my gosh, I was wrong. If I hadn't just eaten, I would totally get that bunless buffalo burger. Look at this, according to this, they've had the same grill since 1939. 
It even survived the fire. The grill's name is Betsy. Sound kind of familiar? Man, I'm gonna get that burger to go. But they said while I wait, I could come check out the gift shop. It's weird, it's in this separate building next door and there's no one in here to guard it. I love small towns. Hey, look. There's Don Welch right there. That's the real life Sally. She's not here today. I miss the real life Flo. I miss the real life Sally. But I did meet this cool wasp inside the window. Ugh. This is awesome though. At least I can buy one of the cups. No wait, not black. I gotta get blue, like Sally. They don't have any more of their own Route 66 style pins in here, the lapel pins. But I guess that gives me an excuse to come back. All right. All right, I got something grilled on Betsy. But I can't leave town until I see the UFO. That's right, you heard me correctly. I passed it on the way in. It was a little white sign that said UFO with an arrow pointing off in a weird direction. I know I don't have a lot of daylight left, but I can't just let something like that go, all right. There's about a thousand wasps flying around this field, but that's okay because we're gonna see this. Oh my gosh, it's a backyard UFO. Wow, the aliens have landed in Stroud. I don't know who did this or why, but this might be my favorite thing I've seen all day long. Oh, the aliens live here. Uh-oh, beware, do not open lid. I'm a rebel, I never obey signs. Do not open, oh, scary. I love this country where toilets can become tourist attractions and laser discs can become UFOs. What are you guys doing here anyway? We are waiting for someone to take us to your leader. Oh. Are you your leader? No, sorry, I just make videos. Send your leader to us. If I ever see him, I'll, I'll get right on that. All right, just gonna hop back across the creek here, go across the field, get into the car, cruise down old Route 66, through the amazing looking small towns, across hill and dale, up and down, left and right, until finally after the most beautiful drive I've ever had in Oklahoma in my life, we arrive in Tulsa, Oklahoma! Well, big city, big city. Ooh, how about that? Downtown Tulsa. It's been a long day. I'm excited to find a hotel. All right. I don't know what happened. One second, I was driving. The next second, I was so tired, I wanted to fall down and sleep well. But don't worry, I didn't forget that I haven't done my duty. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. Butter, beef, chocolate covered bacon, ranch dressing, peanut butter. Oh boy, here we go. Let's go right to left. Peanut butter, down the hatch. That doesn't taste like peanut butter. That tastes, ugh, it tastes like old. Ooh, butter soda, AKA what your pee looks like after you drink too much Mountain Dew. Oh, that tastes like butter. Which is so, ugh, it's like a popcorn jelly belly. The liquid bell. Okay, beef teriyaki soda. Why? Just gotta make sure that all the butter taste is out of my mouth, okay? Mm. No! Oh, that tastes just like drinking soy sauce. <coughs> I should have, oh. I should have smelled that first. But that's disgusting. That's disgusting. Okay, chocolate covered maple smoked bacon. Soda. Seems needlessly complicated. Cannot be worse than the beef. Okay, bacon soda. That's actually kind of good. That just tastes like, like maple syrup, maple-y, chocolate-y. That's kind of good. I would almost drink that one on per like for fun. That's good. Okay, last but not least, ranch dressing soda. My dad's boss has been to that Pops place before and he really wanted me to drink the ranch dressing soda, which terrifies me just a little. It doesn't look like much, but Brian, I gotta be honest with you, that smells like pure gasoline. I don't know why, but I don't want to. I don't want to. <coughs> okay. <coughs> That's worse than Beverly. <laughs> oh my gosh, at first you can't even taste that. Oh. And, then, and then it hits your tongue 
and your mouth wants to follow the lemmings. <coughs> Hold it in! Uh -huh. Man, that's worse than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, ah, uh, I'm okay, I'm okay. All right, and now, last but not least, what I'm holding in my hand is a ranch dressing, chocolate covered, maple smoked, bacon, beef teriyaki, butter, peanut butter, soda. And there's no way that anything could possibly go wrong. Don't betray me, soda. I've seen things now. I've tasted things. I'll never be the same. I think I've done my duty. I'm never drinking soda ever again. Ugh. Hotel and sleep well. <laughs>